Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to erase tourists without hurting anyone. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sir Germany. I am a French photographer living in the beautiful, the incroyable cities of Paris, France. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get all the raw files. And this week, there's a lot of free raw files for free in all the past episodes. Or click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I showed you how to use Lightroom brushes to make a photo that's pretty boring into an amazing photo. This week, I'm going to show you a little trick which is like a photography and a Photoshop trick to erase tourists without hurting anybody. Here we go. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So before we get started, I just want to tell you again that I have this Kickstarter project for this movie called The Parisian. Uh, it's a movie that I'm helped to produce and I play the main lean character. It's a really cool comedy, uh, very nice, romantic, with a bit of fantasy. You can just, we, we did like a little self speech explaining a bit what the movie is. There is many rewards uh, starting from $5 if you help produce this movie, including uh, fine art prints, including uh, special courses on photography. I try to make this like very much for photographer. So check it out. The link uh, will be under the video uh, for you to check it out. Let's jump into this week's tutorial. Now I want to show you a really cool trick that I, that I did already once a tutorial on, but the more I use it, more I find it cool and more I want to give you different examples. I was the, uh, about a couple of days ago, I had an amazing sunset in Paris and, um, but I went back uh, behind the pyramid of the Louvre, which is the, the place where there is the less people. And I was hoping because it was raining that there was not so much people, but of course there was people. And, uh, Photoshop has a way to get rid of tourists, which is, uh, in a very, uh, natural and non harmful way, which I'm about to show you. The first thing is uh, you want to take the photography. You have to put your camera on manual mode. I'm going to put I on my Lightroom so you can see this was shot at 100 of a second at 7.1. Now, you know that usually I shoot uh, with for the highlights. What that means is when the sun was coming straight into the pyramid of the Louvre. And so this is the raw file unretouched. As you can see, we have all the details in the sky and I can hardly, I can kind of guess the shadows in the Louvre. Uh, that's what I call shooting for the highlights, meaning nothing is clipped in the highlights. Honestly, I think I, I should, I could have shot this maybe at um, like at 150th of a second to make it a bit brighter. But the reason why I went at 100th of a second uh, is because I wanted to make sure that every photo was sharp. And I know that at 100th of a second, at 28 millimeter, there's very little chance that there is a shake of movement. So, all my raw files are a bit dark, but they will give me all the drama from the sky and they are still very usable as you're about to see. So now the, here is the trick. And for the trick to work, you have to stand there. Now I was not even on a tripod. I was holding it by hand and I started at, uh, let's see what time I started. I started at uh, 7.06 PM and 32 seconds started taking photos and every second, I would, I would take a photo, but you see, I'm kind of moving a little bit, you know, uh, and I did this for a few seconds. You should uh, do it actually a bit longer. I did it. I stopped at 49. So I started at 32 seconds and I went to 49. So I did this for about, um, 30, uh, yeah, uh, about 17 seconds and you will see it's still going to work. The idea is that uh, luckily all the tourists were kind of moving. So in every photo, the tourist position will be in a different, you know, people were working from left to right and every photo has a bit of a slight difference where the tourists are. So now I'm going to retouch the first photo as like a final retouch. So I'm going to open up the shadows and you see when I open up the shadows, I can see now with, with not too much noise, what's going on in the Louvre, but I still have all the drama from the sky. Then I'm going to bring on the highlights. And I'm going to press the Alt key and I'm going to do my classic Alt point, you know, the white point and my black point. Okay. Then I'm going to boost probably the overall exposure because it's a bit dark. And now I'm going to play around with the, um, the white balance. I think I'm going to go to shade to make it a very warm, uh, sort of, you know, night. And I'm going to put a bit of magenta like this. Uh, I think on the sky, I'm going to take a graded filter. 
for the sky and uh, I'm just going to put this slightly and double click here make sure you go to exposure I'm not going to use my own Lightroom presets because you know, in case you don't have it I want you to be able to follow so I'm just going to lower the exposure and add a bit of blue so that we have a bit of you know contrast between the blue here and uh, um, and whatever is going on here and a little trick that I want to give you if you're not happy with your white balance one thing you can do is you can go the whole way down here to camera calibration and there is different presets it's different ways of looking at uh, basically the colors so you can try for example to go to camera landscape and it's going to completely change the colors in your photo or camera vivid that's that's the two i usually check vivid landscape and standard now whether you shot canon nikon or panasonic or whatever camera you're not going to get the exact same settings but you usually you will always have like a landscape and a vivid so i'm going to go on adobe standard but also you can just go here and play around with these settings and it's basically for me it's like additional options to change the colors so shadows i can change the shadows to the left i'm going to add some green in the shadows and to the right some magenta i want to add a little bit of magenta then i can go to red primary and i can change my reds to the left everything's going to be more red and to the right everything's going to be more a bit more orange let me exaggerate it so you can see but you know on this one i like to add a bit of yellow in my oranges same thing on the greens it's not going to do much well, it actually does a little bit because there is a lot of green in the yellows so i'm just going to change the green you just you know play around until you have the sunset you want to have same thing on the blues if you go to the right or the left uh, i think I'm, I'm going to add a little little bit yeah a little bit of magenta so uh this is the before backslash key gives me the before any after so it's already quite a change but I'm not finished on this one. I want to do the auto, so it's gonna change the profile and I want to enable the profiles correction, remove chromatic aberration. And um, I wanna do more, I wanna do more. I'm gonna do a little radial filter. I'm gonna take a radial filter, make sure I'm on exposure and I'm gonna make a little filter here. I'm gonna invert the mask. I'm gonna feather it completely, maybe add a little bit of clarity. So basically all I'm doing is adding a little bit of exposure and clarity and I'm gonna do this once here, I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna do it here also, just to, you know, make the Louvre a bit more interesting with a bit of light on it. Okay, and um, I think I'm gonna, yeah, basically that's my first retouching. Now, once I'm finished with that, because all the photos are raw files, because they were all shot with the same settings, I can select everything. I'm gonna click on sync and I'm gonna click on synchronize, make sure everything is synchronized. So I have the exact same photo. Uh, it's just, I was not on a tripod, so it's kind of moving a bit, and the tourists are moving a bit. And now here comes the magic, mesdames and messieurs, here comes the magic. I'm gonna right click with all the photos selected. I'm gonna to go to edit, open as layers in Photoshop. Now that's gonna take a while because we're talking 12 raw files. Each raw files is 36 million pixels all open up in one Photoshop file. You gotta have a very strong computer to that. So I'm gonna put on pause until Photoshop managed to open everything. So I'm in Photoshop and you can see that all the raw files uh, are on the top of each other. And um, yes, and so it's one huge big Photoshop file. Now for the reason of this tutorial, and also let's say that you are doing this just for the web and you're not doing a big fine art print, because what I'm about to do is gonna be a lot of time consuming. It's gonna ask a lot from the computer. I'm gonna to go to image, image size. I'm gonna to go to, uh, I'm gonna to go to pixel and I'm gonna go like uh, 3000 pixel. I don't need to have such a huge uh, photo, but that's just me. I'm just doing this so that uh, the tutorial is gonna go faster because from now on, what I'm gonna do is gonna be crazy in terms of use of computers. Okay, so here we go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the first layer and I'm gonna go to the last layer and press, hold on the shift key to select everything. And then I'm gonna go to edit and I'm gonna go to auto align layers because I was, I'm gonna click on okay, because I was on a tripod, I was not, sorry, I was not on a tripod. Every photo is not exactly at the same location. So I want to align them first. So that's very, and a very important step. Now they're all aligned. Okay, if I 
turn one off and on. The only thing that will change from one photo to another is the position of the tourist. That's why you've got a little fringe here that will take care of at the end. Next, they're all selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to smart object. Now, this is going to be a bit time consuming, so I'm going to put on, on pause until all these layers are converted into one smart object. Now, all the layers are were into one smart object, and now here comes the magic. So first, I'm going to go to Windows. I'm going to go and put, you don't have to do that, but it's just for me to show you. I'm going to open up the history panel, which I'm going to put uh, here. All right, I'm going to go back to my layers, make sure this is selected. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to go to layers, smart object, stack mode. And here you have different stack mode. What well, basically to make it simple, stack mode is different mathematics methods that's going to be applied to all your image. And the one I'm going to use now for now is mean. Okay. And what mean is going to do is that it's going to look at every photo and just leave on the screen whatever was common to all the photos. Check this out. If I press Command Z or if I go to the history, okay, before, after. Okay, not bad, but can we do better than Mead? So Mead, basically the idea of Mead is that like if, if a tourist moved and was not part of like, a, you know, of one of the photo, it's going to disappear. So I'm going to check another one. Sometimes Mead is the best, sorry, layers. Uh, blah, 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 smart object, stack mode, and now I'm going to go to median. And with the history, we will be able to compare what median did and what mean did. I'm going to show you a few. There's, there's only three or four that I find really useful. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Medium does, look at this. If I zoom in, uh, that's without any operation. That is with the mean operation. Okay, we can see still a lot of people, and that is with the medium operation. With the medium operation, they almost all disappeared. Almost all disappeared. And there was tons of tourists. Okay. Uh, let's check another one. Let's check another one. Let's go to... And, and look at the clouds. Look at the clouds also. That's the clouds before. And that's with medium. The, the, the clouds sort of like have a, you know, a little sort of, uh, you know, lone exposure look to it, which is, which is kind of cool. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to go to layers smart object stack mode so we did mean medium we're going to do minimum see what minimum is going to do and having the history open you can just compare them and, and and look what they do to your photo so it's funny minimum does the opposite actually it multiplies the tourist okay and i'm going to give you not now but uh i'm about to work i'm working on a, on, on an action set where you can just do that with actions and just put in all your photos and it will do that for you so uh, this is without any actions. This is with stack mean. This is with stack medium. And this is with uh, image stack minimum. So medium gives the best result. Okay, I'm happy with medium. Let's zoom in at 100%. And I did not even lose any sharpness or anything on this photo, which is kind of cool. So now I can just right click and I can just uh, rasterize the layer. And now it's just one photo and I can finish the job of erasing whatever is left. And that's for, for a whole different tutorials, you know, using tools like the healing brush tool, for example, uh, where I can, you know, oh, I have to option click on something clean, for example, up, and I can just erase that, and it's gonna do its calculation. And I didn't do a good job. You can go to the spot healing brush tool, okay, it's smaller with the Alt and Control key. And, you know, but, Honestly, you did about 80%. It's never gonna do a perfect job unless you really stand there and make sure you take a photo when everybody is gone. But um, it did a quite quite a pretty good result. At the end, don't forget to, to crop your photo. And uh, you know, because uh, if you didn't shoot on a tripod like I did, your, your borders will be kind of weird. So on this one, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna crop it. I'm gonna make it even more panorama, maybe have less of the bottom. Press enter and voila. Now, of course, there's still a lot of work to be done on this photo, but it's pretty cool because most of the tourists were erased and nobody got armed. It's amazing. All right, I just want to show you also my latest uh, course, which is the HDR Master Course. It's a course that I love 
I got a lot of great reviews from it. Check it out. Here's a little trailer. And thank you very much and see you next week. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy to announce that I have a new course coming out called the AGR Master Course. I got into photography because of AGR. I love the look that it has. I stopped using SGR a few years back and I got back to it because I really think Photomatics has evolved a lot and it can really do HDR today that are much cleaner, much sharper, uh, with less of an HDR sort of look, but still giving you an incredible impact. I'm going to show you my entire workflow on doing HDR today with Lightroom, Photoshop, Photomatics, digital blending, doing HDR on a single file, how to make HDR with fine art black and white, how to make interior photography with Photomatic. It's got a new option for that, which is really cool. It is my most complete course on HDR. I hope you're gonna check it out. It's gonna take your HDR photography to the next level.